grid is clear. Kathy Malik with the signboard, five seconds, she'll run, jump over the wall, the lights will go on, and when they go off, we'll be racing in Speed GT Championship from Watkins Glen. Round four is underway. Wow, even launch. Really good launch. Randy Popes gets the Porsche, will lead in turn one. Tommy Archer in that big V10 powered Dodge Viper. Remember, he won the last round at Miller Motorsports Park in Utah. He slipped through. Archer. Pilgrim back to third. Archer actually ran up on the curb in turn one and upset his car a little bit. But what a great start by Randy Popes. Now it's the drag race. Uh, Who has the torque to get up through the S's? Brandon. Archer beginning to claw at the back of that Porsche. Fourth place car, Brandon Davis with the big horse powered four, but they've given him a restriction. They've dropped him from 8,000 revs to 74. He doesn't have as much speed as he had last week. Oh, little side by side crash back there. They got through it okay, but they did hit. Michael Galati and Mike McCann. McCann getting the best of Galati in his Cadillac CTSV right there. You see the black and white Cadillac of Mike McCann. Meanwhile, back up front, Randy Popes. He says that Porsche is a dream in the boot. He needs to pull away. Eric Curran in his Corvette all over the back of Michael Galati, the red and white Corvette up at the top of the screen. Meanwhile, Popes through the toe of the boot. Let's talk a little bit about some changes since the last race, and I'm talking about on the Viper, 25% restrictor on the inlet has taken some power from that. I just said that the Mustang loses RPM down from 8,000 to 7,400. Those are performance adjustments. Here comes Brandon Davis. 7,400 RPM is the RPM that the Cadillac runs as well. So Brandon Davis backing off that 8,000 RPM that they could run. But the word that I got, Dorsey, is they weren't using all of the 8,000 that they had available to them anyway. Well, that's what you really don't know. I mean, that's something they're saying, but we don't know. We're not the engine builder. Certainly that uh, reduction of 600 RPM takes power away without question. Right now, Andy Pilgrim trying to work his way back to the front. The Pilgrim, so consistent. Remember, he has won championships without winning races, so he is Mr. Consistent. Mike McCann coming under attack by the blue and red K-Pax Porsche of five-time world champion Michael Galati. Now that Viper in the hands of Tommy Archer, 25% restrictor on that motor after the Miller Motorsports Park event. But the word I have, Dorsey, is they've done so much engine development in the offseason. They really found a lot of horsepower. And even though that restrictor is bigger than the one that they ran last year, Tommy Archer still laying down a pretty good pace right now. Oh, yeah. They, they ran a 20% restrictor last year. This is 25, so it's a little bit worse. Choked down, but don't count Archer out. That's for sure. That car should get around here pretty well. But Randy Post is the master of Watkins Glen. There's no doubt about it. I think he may be the mayor of Watkins Glen. <laughs> like I said, I think he's got a key to this racetrack right now. Mike McCann trying to stay in front of Michael Galati in that K-Pax Porsche. McCann in his Cadillac. And there is Eric Curran pressuring from behind. He's pushing Michael Galati. Birthday boy wants a win. And Eric Curran has had so much bad luck this season. Needs to work his way back up for the guys at the Wayland Engineering Program. Sonny Wayland in an identical Corvette to the one that Eric Curran drives. That's documented. He's had a horrible season so far. Hasn't been able to finish a race. And sometimes you fall into those, those years and you just don't understand what's gone wrong. Brandon Davis all over the back. And then look at Eric Curran working his way up onto Michael Galati be interesting to see one more time. That'll be a Corvette versus a Porsche down the back straightaway the next time by. Well, I think, you know, one of the biggest mistakes anybody ever did is when you let Brandy Popes get a big lead on you, gap you, it just puts the reins in his hands. He can drive whatever pace he wants to right now. There's no pressure and no one's drafting him. Well, the GT class here in Speed World Challenge Bigger cars, heavier cars, more horsepower, Dorsey. I would think that tire conservation on a warm day like today is going to be more critical, and perhaps a pace out in front early on is what you need to Well, you consider. might be right about that, Brian. One of the cars, one of the Porsches, just came in. That's the 66 car, which is a stop-and-go penalty because he jumped the start. Let me explain this for a minute, because on a starting procedure, on a standing start, the rule is if the car moves whatsoever before those lights go off, that's a jump start. Well, that was Tim McKenzie in the number 66 Porsche. Also understanding that Dino Crescentini in one of the GMG Porsches, teammates to James Sofronis, also jumped the start and will serve a penalty. Tommy Archer 
pulled a little bit clear of Andy Pilgrim, but it's Brandon Davis who's now in his black Mustang, the number 10, really putting the pressure on Pilgrim in that number eight Cadillac CTSV. You know what'll happen, Brian, you'll be up there at the starting line and you'll put your foot in on the clutch and you'll rev the engine all the way up to the rev limiter, wait to release the clutch, but the clutch gets really hot in that mode and it'll start creeping. The car start moving forward, it's a downhill straightaway. Any movement in the car, you get that penalty. Last time by Randy Popes, just about two tenths of a second faster than Tommy Archer. Almost about a second lead right now, and Andy Pilgrim beginning to drop back just a little bit, it seems like, Calvin. He is, and I think certainly he's trying to manage those tires. That's a real key with a heavy car like the Caddy, but can Andy Pilgrim is really feeling at home with this Remington Cadillac team. You've got Neville Legas, who's from Pratt Miller. He comes over on a contract basis for the race weekends, and believe it or not, that is the same car that Andy has been driving since the year 2003. So even the transporter was purchased last year, the hospitality unit, everything's looking good for Andy, and he feels that the team is really coming from strength to strength. I think the only thing that's different is the uh, team uniform that he wears, but what a great comfort to go to the racetrack and get in a car that you know so well. Yeah, there's nothing like your own race car. It's like your own bed. You know, you just get so used to it. It's, it's just home. Randy Popes, the mayor of Watkins Glen, continues to lead. Oh, oh and a back. problem onto the front straightaway. Jeff Courtney in one of the Woodhouse Vipers. A problem onto the front straightaway. Courtney back underway. and. Like he made some pretty significant contact, Dorsey, but the car running straight. Yeah, he just got out from under him in turn 11 there. It turned around and he backed into the wall, but it doesn't look like it's damaged. Well, a moment for Jeff Courtney here at Watkins Glen in round four of the Speed GT Championship, but Randy Popes having it all his way out in front right now. Randy Popes leads over Tommy Archer and Andy Pilgrim. That is your top three in the Speed GT Championship from Watkins Glen International. Stick around. Plenty of excitement yet to come.